Tender. Oh, 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 oh. Seriously, how good is that? Mm. Hi, I'm Shuey, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to grill the perfect picanha steaks. No rotisserie needed, we go on old school. I'm going to kill you, bird. Just sit back, grab a drink or two, and let's get into it. For this recipe, we're going to need a rump cap like this 2.7 kilogram, 150 day barley fed Angus with a marble score of five plus. Now when selecting a rum cap, there's a couple of things you want to look out for. You want a nice even fat cap and you want to see plenty of marbling in the meat. Now I don't have to worry about that because Mick and the team out at Gippsland Premium Meats out in Berwick always have my back. Cheers team. All we have to do is remove any underside fat, if any, and any of the silver skin. After you finish trimming it up, we're gonna leave the fat cap face down because it's easy to cut through that way. When we're cutting steaks out of the rump cap, we're going to cut with the grain. By cutting the steaks with the grain, once they're cooked, you're gonna end up with a much more tender bite while you're eating your steak. So you're just gonna need a sharp knife and we're gonna cut these steaks, as I said, with the grain and roughly about two and a half centimeters thick. Now, premature liking of this video is recommended and sharing with your mates, because sharing is caring. The seasoning before the cook couldn't be any simpler. We are keeping this as traditional as possible by just using coarse sea salt. So don't be shy, get it on there. And then we're gonna flip them over and do the other side. Don't forget the ends and the fat cap. As the salt starts to dissolve, it's gonna get drawn into the meat and it's gonna help tenderize and season it. Salt, it's nature's own MSG. It makes everything taste better. Today, I'm gonna to be using a 57 centimetre Weber kettle and I'm gonna be pairing it up with some charcoal baskets because I wanna set up a dual zone cooking area with a cooler zone for the first part of the cook and then a hot section for searing these steaks at the very end. Now, how I'll do that is by Filling a charcoal chimney starter a third of the way with lump charcoal, I'll place one of my charcoal baskets in the Weber and I'm gonna dump the fuel into that. I'll put the grill in place and I'll put the lid on making sure the lid vent is on the opposite side of the fuel and that the lid vent is wide open. I'm also gonna shut down the bowl vent to pretty much all the way closed. And I'm gonna give that time to come up to about 150 to 160 degrees Celsius. Now I'm also gonna be using an ambient temp probe to track the Weber's temp. I tried using my finger, but I kept burning it. The Weber's at temp, so it's time to get the steaks in there. And to track the internal temp of these steaks, I'm gonna just insert an internal temp probe into one of them. Now placing the fat cap towards the heat, this is just gonna help protect the steak a little bit. I'm also gonna add one chunk of smoking wood directly over the charcoal. I'm using iron bark today. And we're gonna track the internal temp until it reaches 46 degrees Celsius. My temps are based off cooking these steaks to a perfect medium rare. This is not the finished temp. Remember, this is a dual zone cook. We still have a second part to go. As the steak's near that 46 degrees Celsius internal temp, I'm gonna light up another half chimney of lump charcoal. We need a searing hot heat for the second part of this cook. That's why I'm using lump charcoal today. Now, before I start getting questions or comments saying that I got pink eye, uh, look, this is one of the downfalls of barbecuing every day. I went and saw my doctor and apparently it's the smoke. So they give me some eye drops. Hopefully it clears it up soon. The steaks have reached an internal temp of 46 degrees Celsius, so we can get them out of the Weber now. One and two. And I'll dump that other fuel into the Weber now and pop the grill back on. We're gonna leave the lid off the Weber now because the more oxygen we can get to that lump charcoal, the hotter it's gonna get. It's time to see these steaks. All you're going to need is an instant read thermometer, a pair of tongs and a refreshing drink. Oh, and some steak. Now place the steaks directly over the heat and we're just gonna flip them every minute or so. Both steaks go on. If you get a flare up, just move the steaks. All right, time to flip the steaks. Oh, look at that color. And we just move it. Keep it and keep a check on that internal temp. Once they hit 54 degrees, they're coming off. Time for another flip and they are done. Now I hope you click your tongs to make sure they work before you use them. 
Today we are cooking with what's known as the reverse sear method and all up our cook's going to take around about 40 to 45 minutes or for those of you who like to use my beer timer you're looking at a two beer cook. Beer and steak go hand in hand so I don't mind if you throw in an extra cheeky beer for this cook. These smell absolutely amazing and the best part is there's no waiting because we've already rested them. Just grab a sharp knife and just cutting across the grain and maybe about five mil thick pieces. How good does that look? Perfect. This seriously is that good. It should be illegal. Hmm. As always, cheers for watching.